Thank you very much for inviting me. Uh, I'm very happy uh, to be here, well, m more, more or less. Uh, could, we, could, could we tune down the, the light a little bit because uh, the quality of my image is so bad, it needs contrast. And also, um, my anxiety would not show that, obviously. Um, yeah, I'm caught, I'm caught between uh, beauty and uh, coercion in my, in my connection talk. Um, well, um, there are only a few occasions when an audience uh, takes pity uh, with a lawyer. And one of these occasions is when the lawyer ventures into the field of art, uh, aesthetics, architecture, uh, things beautiful. So uh, I ask for your indulgence. Of course, lawyers would claim that there is something like uh, legal creativity, but usually that ends up with uh, facing the ethics board of uh, the Bar Association or the sentencing judge and then turns from uh, pity into self-pity. Uh, in view of that, um, I've decided to downgrade my presentation uh, from uh, criteria to comments. Uh, I don't want to be too normative, uh, so I will still use the terminology criteria, but I really ask you to to see this as, as comments. Um, my comments uh, will be structured around two names. Uh, uh, the first name is uh, Johann Peter Willebrand. Obviously, he must be German uh, with this kind of name. Um, interesting guy, uh, no photograph. Uh, uh, also no painting or anything like that where he shows. Uh, maybe uh, has something to do with the fact that he wrote uh, what you could uh, regard as an instruction book for um, uh, border guards or homeland security. Uh, he argued for a detailed uh, registration of foreigners and also citizens uh, of towns. But uh, he also uh, encouraged uh, the pledge uh, you can uh, read when you're standing in line at Logan Airport waiting for your passport to be stamped and being admitted to the United States. And during those three hours, you have plenty of time to read, uh, for instance, the pledge uh, that uh, uh, we will treat American citizens and uh, foreigners Politely, so he encouraged encouraged that. Um, uh, as my professor would say, uh, Mr. Burkett, relevance. Yes, um, I will come to that. Um, one of the most famous books uh, he wrote. By the way, he to me has become a sort of, in spite of uh, all these nasty things, he has become a sort of personal role model. Uh, he started as a lawyer and a judge. Uh, he became an advisor to what you today would call urban planners, uh, to architects. And in the end, he decided just to travel for the rest of his life and became uh, a travel writer. So um, in his second career, he wrote uh, this book, uh, which in English would read uh, Outline of a Beautiful City. And it's part one of uh, basic rules and instructions for enhancing social happiness in the cities. Uh, now, the reason why I'm mentioning him is because he is a protagonist uh, of a series of people which turned around the relationship between beauty and coercion and more or less in one way or other, try to coerce people into beauty. And this is my point. 
uh, design talk and architecture talk is dangerous talk. Uh, there are, of course, idealists uh, who have designed cities for others up to today where they now have to sort of uh, put satellite dishes on these beautifully designed homes. There have been the modernists, uh, most famous, of course, Le Corbusier, uh, who designed how people should live. Uh, there have been the totalitarian designers uh, where the, uh, certain impressions of architecture should be and what it should do to people. And there is, of course, in a more benevolent tone, uh, today's contemporary suggestions uh, on livability, also on public safety and personal security. Uh, and uh, when you look at these instructions, it looks like a leaflet for uh, a handbook for a sniper, but it's actually about uh, <laughs> uh, public security. So why do I introduce this? Um, the criteria that I directed to those of you who design, who are architects, would be to ask yourself whether you're actually designing for people. Is in the context of privacy, for instance, are you imposing your understanding of privacy to their understanding of privacy? Or when you work for somebody else, uh, are you sure that their privacy is everybody's privacy? In short, how much space for opportunities to develop and live their own lives do you give to people? Are you prepared to leave to others? And this brings me to the second name, Lena Bobardi. There is a photograph of Lena Bobardi. Uh, she was Italian. Uh, she worked uh, as an architect uh, in Brazil. And she was given the task of um, turning uh, a factory ground into a recreational uh, area for uh, the citizens in this neighborhood. This was in Sao Paulo. Uh, Sao Paulo, a remarkable city, absolutely chaotic city. It has the highest percentage of helicopters per inhabitant because that's the only way uh, to beat Russia there. And it is, of course, a city with uh, social, conf social conflicts, crime, problems. So how did she go about to transfer a factory uh, which uh, produced uh, tin drums and later tried to produce refrigerators into a recreational area. This is what she did. It's not uh, these two, what she called embracing towers, are not looking uh, particularly uh, inviting. Uh, but uh, it was her way uh, to comment uh, on the change uh, from a factory for tin drums to a factory for recreation. And with this kind of uh, architecture, she put into question the relationship between work and recreation. Uh, this is uh, the reason why she built these uh, embracing towers here. Uh, you see the soccer fields, which are, of course, very important in, in, in Brazil. On the top of the, of the broader building is that she had to bridge uh, a drainage uh, system here. Uh, very remarkable, of course, the windows in, in, in the bigger a bigger building, but this is a, uh, this is a social comment. Uh, what you see here is um, a revolt at a youth uh, prison in uh, Sao Paulo uh, where uh, the police had to use grenades to uh, make holes in the wall. Uh, 
of course, what you would ask yourself is if, if, if uh, they are having basketball fields and things like that, uh, how do they make sure that the balls don't fall outside? And you can see it in the construction here. There are wooden slides uh, which are put in front of, uh, front of these windows. So just let me uh, give you a few images. And uh, then, of course, uh, comes the call again. Uh, relevance, Mr. Burkett, relevance. Uh, I would invite you uh, to look perhaps more closely at some of the pictures I've just shown you, like this one. I think uh, what this shows is what he has tried to do was to, to create or to give an opportunity for social gathering. When you look at that, perhaps an opportunity for cross-generational communication. This is something uh, very rare in uh, uh, social media, cross actual cross-generational communication. Or here, uh, opportunity for cross-cultural communication. I don't know, if you're, if you're on Facebook and if you happen to have uh, friends from other countries, like uh, from Thailand and from China perhaps, and then if you look at the list of their friends, you will realize that most of their friends are either Thai or Chinese. Uh, there is not the same sort of intersection uh, uh, between, color, uh, between uh, cultures here. And here, of course, opportunity for variety. And uh, to me, and in the context of privacy, the most striking image is perhaps this one because it shows, uh, seems to show to me at least something which I would call opportunity for protected openness. That is, uh, in my view, uh, the relationship between uh, privacy and, and public is not a binary one. It's a sort of analog scale on which you can move and on which, in fact, you always move. Um, so, is the low wall, which you see here, which is of course also a comment on the working situation and the cubicles and working situation, is it a metaphor for scaled privacy? Or, and, and this is something that is really bothering me throughout this conference, uh, should we stop with these kind of metaphors. No more metaphors for the cyber world, uh, at least not from architecture, because we fail to grasp the essence of electronic communication still. I don't know. Thank you very much. No questions, break.